AP Calculus AB, Unit 8, Day 4, Lesson. So, um, we're going to get a little more practice with U substitution, integration by substitution. There's a warmer problem. Uh, you're being given the second derivative and initial condition for the derivative and initial condition for the original function. So, this should help you find the C values. You're going to have to do it twice to get to the final answer. And your final answer shouldn't have any C's when you're done. There's two different C's along the way. So go ahead and pause the video and try the problem yourself. Okay, assuming you've tried it. Um, the first derivative is going to be the integral of the second derivative, dx. So that's going to be parentheses 2x plus sine x parentheses dx. The antiderivative is 2x to the second divided by the new exponent minus cosine x, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, which we don't want, so we need an extra negative, plus c. We're going to try and find the c value now. We're going to plug in the initial condition with the derivative, 0, and... The answer should come out to 3. Now, cosine 0 is 1, not 0. So you can add 1 to both sides, so c equals 4. So your derivative is x squared minus cosine x plus 4. You're halfway there. The original function is going to be the integral of the derivative, which is going to be the integral of what you just got, parentheses x squared minus cosine x plus 4 dx. The antiderivative is going to be x cubed over 3 minus sine x plus 4x plus c. We use the initial condition for the original function. Put 0 in everywhere. And that should give us 7. Now, these all go away, so c equals 7. So your origin, uh, the original function, final answer, is going to be x cubed over 3 minus sine x plus 4x plus 7. <clears throat> That's the final answer. So find the c's along the way if you've been given initial conditions. So... Um, there's a lot of problems um, that we encounter that need u substitution. You guys often would forget to do derivatives with u substitution, but same thing with antiderivatives. So some people might just be like, oh, yeah, this is going to be like a cosine, negative cosine 3x plus c. Nope. You're getting an extra 3 out in front, right? This is... Uh, u substitution problem. Now, I think it's easy enough to do without u substitution, but do the, have the same effect. Just pay attention to chain rule. So u equals 3x, du equals 3dx, and over 3. So we get a one third sine u du. So we negative one third cosine u plus c, and then rewrite it back in terms of the original variable completely. Place the u with 3x, and that's the answer. Now, I think I, like I said up here when I wrote this answer, I'd be like, oh, there's going to be extra 3 in front. Let's put a 1 -third. That would fix it also. So, next one. Um, let's see. So, you know, like I said, I personally would just, I'd just be like, oh, uh, well, there's a 2. There's going to be e to the 4x. There's going to give an extra 4 in front. So let's do divide by 4 plus c. The answer is 1 half e to the 4x plus c. But we could do u substitution. u equals 4x, the inner function. du equals 4dx. Now, you could try and make this like perfectly match this 2 right here. 
I'll go and show that. Okay, well, let's just divide by two to make that a two. So then that's gonna be one half uh, e to the u du, which is one half e to the u plus c, which is one half e to the four x plus c. But I personally would do u equals four x, du, du equals four dx, and just not worry about that two. I would just put the two in front of everything and then totally get rid of this four. So this is the way I would do it. I wouldn't do it this way. I mean, that works, but I just feel like you're putting a lot of extra. So there's a two already. Now there's a one fourth. And we just put them all in front. And then it takes care of itself without as much thought of trying to get that number perfect. Just ignore those numbers. Same final answer. So, anyways, some things to think about. Now, on the back, I kind of want to show you a bunch of problems that kind of look like each other, but end up being totally different rules. And this is going to be one of the things that you're going to have to get good at, is recognizing maybe when it's some kind of special rule or, or whatever. So I've listed all the antiderivative rules up here on the side for our convenience. And, you know, we'll look at this list and decide which rules we think might work. So this problem right here, which of these rules do you think it might be? Now, it seems like it's got to involve something with fractions, right? So you know, which rule? Which rule should it be? Could it be number one? That has a fraction in it. Maybe. I don't know. Number 10, maybe? 11, 12? Maybe. Now, looking at this, I'm thinking it's not going to be 12 because that's a square root, right? I mean, it looks kind of like 11. Now, let's try u substitution. And let's just go for the whole denominator, maybe at first. Sometimes it's not going to work, but it's good first try. Okay. Oh, that works. You get the x cubed, x cubed dx. Perfect. So this is going to have a one-fourth in front. It's going to be the integral of du over u. Well, this is the natural log one, right? Absolute value of u plus c. Absolute value of 1 plus x to the fourth plus c. Now, by the way, we don't need these absolute values anymore because the inside is always going to be positive no matter what. So we're going to rewrite it with parentheses. You still have to have grouping symbol. It's not really less work, but it is a simpler answer because now you don't have to think about the absolute values. So this one ended up being rule number 10. Okay. How about the next one? The next one looks almost the same, right? So, I mean... <clears throat> Is it, uh, is it 1? Is it 10? 11? 12? I don't think it's 12 again. Let's try u substitution. Let's try the whole denominator. du equals 4x cubed dx. Now, hopefully right away you're like, oh, that's no good. I need x to the first power. Okay. So it's not going to be the same as last time. When the whole denominator doesn't work, then you got to look for maybe part of it. Now, part of it is like, well, what would you pick for u whose derivative would it have an x to the first power in it? But also, you might start looking at these more specialized inverse trig rules, like 11 and 12. So maybe it's 11. But 11 has something squared here. Could I, what would I plug in these parentheses to get x to the fourth? x squared. That's going to be our u substitution. u equals x squared, and then du equals 2x dx. That's perfect, because that gives us that x dx. I don't want the 2. That's an easy fix. So this is going to be 1 half the integral of du over 1 plus u squared, which is inverse tangent. And then we got to rewrite it back in terms of our original variable which was x squared. 
So this one turned out to be a very different rule than the last one, even though they looked very similar at first, right? Now this negative, by the way, superscript negative, that's not a negative exponent. You leave it the way it is. That's not an exponent. That's, that means inverse. So that one ended up being rule number 11. Okay, next one. Now the next one has square roots in it. So you're thinking, uh, no, is it is it number one? You're thinking, no, it can't be number one. Is it number 10 or 11 or 12? I mean, it seems like the one that looks the most like it is 12, right? Maybe it's 12. This one doesn't have a square root. I mean, the others don't really either. Let's try u equals... Now, if you did u equals the whole denominator with the, with the square root, that's not going to usually work out. Because then du is going to be 1 half of 1 plus x to the fourth. It's a negative 1 half. Chain rule times derivative of what's inside. dx. I mean, does that look like x cubed dx? No, that looks horrible. So probably if the denominator has like some kind of outer function too. Probably what's inside the square root. Let's try that. So du equals 4x cubed dx. Oh yeah, that works good. Yeah, x cubed dx. So this is gonna be 1 fourth du over the square root of u, which is 1 fourth u to the negative 1 half this ends up being a power rule. This is rule number one. Bump it up one, divide by the new exponent, multiply by the reciprocal, plus c. Uh, final answer, we write back in terms of u, or in terms of x, replace the u's. So that ended up being rule number one. Probably not the rule you were thinking of, but there you go. So you gotta keep an open mind. Now, next one, you guys try these next ones. Let's see how you do. Try the next ones. It could be like uh, maybe what's inside the denominator of the square root, but not the square root. 2x dx, perfect. Don't want the 2. It's going to be 1 half. d over u, square root of u. u to the negative 1 half. Power rule, bump it up one, divide by the new exponent, plus c. Now, all right, let's see. Let's try this one. u equals x squared plus 5. du equals 2x dx. I don't want the two. Now there's a six there. I'm not gonna try and make it a six. Let's just put the six out front. Now we get a one half in front. It's gonna be d over u. It's gonna be three natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. It's gonna be three natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus five. But then you should recognize that we don't need these absolute values because the inside is always positive. So, you like saying the answer is the absolute value of 5 and just leaving it like that. Well, shouldn't we just say it's 5, right? Isn't that nicer? Okay, now one more example I just want to throw in there. Okay, let's do this one. Integral of 1 over the square root of 4 minus 9x squared. I'm going to give you one a little tougher, which is probably good. Now, first shot, you might say, oh, let's just make everything inside the denominator your u. But hopefully quickly, you're like, nope, that's not going to work. I don't have an x dx right here, so that's no good. So maybe we say, well, maybe it's a more special rule. Maybe it's like this one right here, inverse sine. But here's the deal. You need a 1 here, and you should take care of that first. So you get the 1. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna take the square root of 4 out, which I can do. But then this gets divided by a 4. That's fine. Now, this is going to end up out in front, 1 half. 
Now this right here, this is where we're trying to get a u squared. So what would you plug in this parentheses? 3x over 2. That should be your u. u equals 3 halves x. So du equals 3 halves dx. I don't want the 3 halves, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 thirds. Now I'm going to put that in front too. We have 1 half, now we have 2 thirds. So now it's going to be du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. But you have to take that 4 out first. So it's going to be 1 third inverse sine of u plus c. Keep going. And 1 third inverse sine of 3 halves x plus c. <clears throat> so lots of different possibilities. Okay, lots of different possibilities. You gotta try and keep them all in mind. Uh, you're gonna have to memorize them, so you shouldn't usually just have the list right next to it. Try these problems in the back of your book. Uh, the mostly odds, check your odds in the back of your book. And maybe I'll put the evens online before we go over it.